Hey everybody, it's Silvershim, and welcome back to the Blender Solar System. Last time, we took a look at planet Saturn, and now we're moving on to the planet Uranus. Uranus, or Uranus, is the seventh planet from the Sun. It is the third largest planet and the fourth most massive. Now, unlike the other planets we've looked at, Uranus has not been properly known since ancient times. While it can be seen without any aid in specific conditions, its dimness and slow orbit led it to be mistaken for a star by early astronomers. So Uranus wasn't properly discovered until March 13, 1781, by the German-British astronomer William Herschel. Once its movements were mapped out and was recognized as a planet, several names were suggested for it. Herschel originally wanted to call it Georgium Sidus, or George's Star, after King George III of Great Britain. It was also suggested to name it Herschel after its discoverer, and even Neptune. A name which wasn't completely forgotten, of course. The final decision for the name was made by German astronomer Johann Ellert Bode. Uranus is the Greek god of the sky, and the father of Kronos, who was known to the Romans as Saturn. What's strange about Uranus is that, unlike most other planets, it gets its name from Greek, as Bode had opted to do that instead of choosing its Roman equivalent, Silus. The name Uranus is actually Latinized from the original name of the god, Uranus. And Uranus is the preferred pronunciation among astronomers, with Uranus being an acceptable variant. Uranus has a diameter of over 50,000 kilometers, that is about four Earths wide, and unlike Jupiter and Saturn, it is an ice giant. Like them, it has no solid surface, but has other elements besides hydrogen and helium, heavier elements like water and ammonia, and methane, which is the reason for its blue coloration. Uranus rotates on its axis in about 17 hours and 14 minutes. Now, one of Uranus's most notable traits is its axial tilt, which is about 98 degrees, so its rotation is considered retrograde. As such, it has extreme seasons, such that each of its poles experiences total daylight for half of a Uranian year, and then darkness for the other half. Like Jupiter and Saturn, Uranus has a ring system. Uh, I bumped that up, you can see it better. Uranus's ring system isn't nearly as visible as Saturn's, but it is more visible than Jupiter's. And most of them are named after letters in the Greek alphabet.
So that's Uranus. I think it's time to move on to Uranus's moons. The Uranian system contains 27 known moons. Only five of them are large enough to be rounded by their own gravity. From inner to outer, they are Miranda, Ariel, Umbriel, Titania, and Oberon. You may notice these moons aren't fully mapped. That's because when the only probe to ever visit Uranus, Voyager 2 arrived, they were positioned so that, thanks to the tilt of Uranus's axis, they all had a hemisphere that never rotated into the sunlight for Voyager 2 to view. So we only have about half of each of them mapped. First two of these discovered were Titania and Oberon. That's Titania and that's Oberon. They were discovered on January 11th, 1787 by William Herschel. The next two, Ariel and Umbriel, were discovered on October 24th, 1851, by William Lassell. And finally, Miranda was discovered February 16th, 1948. Gerard Kuiper, a Dutch astronomer, while well, Lassell was English. Now, unlike most celestial bodies, Uranus's get their moons get their names from the works of William Shakespeare and Alexander Pope. The first four Uranian moons to be discovered were named by William Herschel's son, John Herschel. He named Titania and Oberon after the queen and king of the fairies from Shakespeare's play A Midsummer Night's Dream, while Ariel and Umbriel were named after sky spirits from a poem by Alexander Pope. However, the reason behind these names was actually because he believed the god of the sky should be accompanied by spirits of the sky. However, when Kuiper named the moon he discovered, he got the name Miranda from a character from The Tempest, another Shakespearean play, but Miranda was actually a human character which broke the trend John Herschel originally set, and from that point on, Uranus's moons all got names from the works of William Shakespeare or that poem by Alexander Pope, regardless of their species.
So, a little more about each of these main moons. Miranda is the smallest of the five, at about 470 kilometers in diameter, and is known for its many canyons and grooves. Ariel is Uranus's fourth largest moon, at about 1,160 kilometers, and is the and is relatively bright compared to these other moons. Umbriel, Uranus's third largest moon, at about 1,160 kilometers, is much darker. Titania is Uranus's largest moon, at about 1,600 kilometers. And Oberon, Uranus's second largest moon, has a diameter of about 1,500 kilometers. The orbits of these moons are all fairly lined up with Uranus's equator, and so are on their side, like the planet itself. And, like most moons, they are all tidally locked to their planet. Miranda orbits at around 129,000 kilometers from Uranus in about 1.4 days. Ariel, at around 191,000 kilometers, takes about two and a half days. Umbriel, at 266,000 kilometers, takes about four days. Titania, at 436,000 kilometers, takes 8.7 days. And finally, Oberon, at about 584,000 kilometers away, takes about 13 and a half days to orbit Uranus. Of Uranus's other 27 moons, 13 are regular moons and orbit within Uranus's rings. We've got Belinda, which is the only moon besides Ariel and Umbriel, who gets its name from Alexander Pope's poem. And there's Bianca, Cordelia, Cresta, Cupid, Desdemona, Juliet, Mab. Ophelia, Perdita, Portia, Puck, and Rosalind. And Uranus also has nine irregular satellites orbiting much further out in rather strange orbits. And these moons are Caliban, Ferdinand, Francisco, Margaret, Prospero, Cetibus, Stefano, Sycorax, and Trinculo. So, that's it for Uranus's moons. Now, let's take a look at Uranus's orbit. So, back in the solar system, we have our seventh planet, Uranus. Uranus takes just over 84 years to orbit the Sun, at a distance of around 2.8 billion kilometers, or just over 19 astronomical units. Got Uranus here with its five largest moons. And now, gonna try to get a view of Uranus from Earth.
Now, unlike the other planets we've seen so far, Uranus, for the most part, cannot be seen from Earth without some special equipment. But here we can see the planet. I'm going to use depth of field with the focus object just so looks a bit better. And here we go. That's the planet Uranus. So, next time the Blender Solar System, we're going to move on to the next and furthest planet from the Sun. See you then.